when they say mathematics is in everything, at first we think that everyone says this and it's just very cliche, but when you think at it, uh, we see that no, it's really right. When you want to uh, solve an economical problem or in physics, in many different subjects, we needed to uh, solve our problems and improve our, our lives. Students from all the different uh, school districts of Tehran would take an entrance exam and then the top maybe 90 or 100 of them would get in. When we entered high school, I decided math because I liked and uh, the high school really supported us with resources, teachers, because this school is where Mirza Khani rise from and it's something in the basis of this school that's supporting students to continue in fields they like to study. I was uh, Mariam's classmate uh, when we were uh, 14, 15 years old. I can remember Mariam was so fast. It was magnificent that she could solve the problem, uh, which was really difficult for all of us. Sometimes uh, she even couldn't explain for us because she, was, uh, she could think so fast. First time that I became interested in math more seriously, I was in high school. Uh, I decided to participate in Olympiad and I started by reading some book. And one of them was Mariam Number Theory book. There was something special and different about that book. It was written by two Iranian women, Mariam and Roya Beheshti. Before she writes this, there was no resource for the students to study. And she just did something great by writing this book. I mean, uh, after many years, we still use it, we still learn from it. There is a very good feeling behind solving the problems. You know, when you try hard, hard, and you can't find the a solution and suddenly you say oh that's it and that's the very good feeling that keeps you continue this way and I think my Mirza Khani could show this passion to everyone when you talk about a competition like fields and a medal most of times we think that men should won this prizes and we think that women can't it's not true but everyone thinks like that in Iran, when we were growing up, there was never any kind of negative perception about women doing math or science. We never got the impression that math was an unfeminine profession to take. The fact that, uh, that women are on par with men, at least in terms of abilities, is not new in Iran. I think that aspect has been and is reflected by the composition of the students in universities in Iran today. In the higher education, we have almost more than 50 percent of girls. At Sharif, more than 40 percent uh, freshman students are the girls. Women in Iran are not a privileged group, so they have to try to find a better social situation by entering to art, in science. To belong to a disadvantageous group has this advantage that you are forced to, to work hard. The fact that she was the first woman to win the Fields Medal, I'm sure that will be an inspiration for more women to come into mathematics and sciences. Mariam, in my opinion, will be a leading star for women in science all over the world, especially in Iran, because they can look up at her example and try to find first their own uh, special talents and pursue it. A lot of good high schools are trying to initiate Mirza Khani Fellowship, Mirza Khani Scholarship to remind the students of her and to just keep her legacy alive. Mayim's example shows that the pursuit of knowledge is a borderless, timeless, and yes, genderless adventure. Her example will convince many others who may not have otherwise done so, pursue science. People look at her and see what she accomplished, and girls will look at that and say, that can be me. 
I think she's raised the bar for girls, but besides that, she's uh, opened up a new way. She has proved us that it doesn't matter being the first one, you can do anything that you want to and you put your desire and your efforts in. She was one of us, she was just like us in this school. And that helps us to think that why can't we do what she does and makes us feel very better about what we are. Maryam Mirzakhani's pioneering work gave mathematicians powerful new tools for understanding the geometry of surfaces. In 2014, she became the first woman to win the Fields Medal, the most prestigious prize in mathematics. The crux of good mathematics is to find problems that are well-motivated and important and somehow centrally connected to lots of other mathematics. Mariam's work not only solved problems, but it also brought other problems into reach. Now I had my half circles here, and I added this half circle, which depended on A1 to AN, but that basically A1 to AN determines a shape like this. Her papers were published when she was an undergrad. Pretty funny story is that she was asked to referee somebody else's grant proposal when she was an undergrad because she was already building a reputation based on her results. A lot of Mir Khani's work had to do with the geometry of surfaces, like the surface of a ball or the surface of a donut, what mathematicians call a torus. And in her doctoral dissertation, she focused on a very basic question about surface geometry, which is about what happens if you start somewhere on the surface and walk in a straight line. Depending on your surface, your path might close up on itself. For example, if you're walking straight on the surface of the Earth, you're going to go around a great circle like the equator and end up back where you started. And the same thing happens on a torus, a donut surface, if you walk straight toward the central hole. You're gonna dip down into the hole and underneath and back around and end up back where you started. But if you were to walk straight in a different direction on the torus, your path might wander around forever and never get back where it started. Mir Sakhani's doctoral dissertation focused on the straight paths that eventually close up and never cut across themselves, what mathematicians call simple closed curves. These curves are easy to categorize on a sphere or a torus, but not easy to categorize on a torus with more than one hole. And there was an interpretation she could give to these numbers and to the recursive formula she found for them, which led to a new proof of a famous result in string theory or mathematical physics that was originally called Witten's Conjecture. Those three papers that made up her thesis were published in the three top journals in mathematics, which is an incredibly rare achievement for a grad student to make it in any one of those journals. She could make these very vague speculations about the shape of the unknown mathematical frontier, quite elaborate and detailed in imagining how things might fit together, and she was very adept at finding the right question. She solved a problem called Ratner's theorem for moduli space, and she did this working with two other mathematicians, Eskin and Mohammadi. This problem that she solved stems from a very simple question. If you hit a ball on a billiard table, what are the possible ways that it could travel? Imagine that we put a mirror along every side of our billiard table. When a ball hits one of the walls, it's going to bounce off, but in the mirror, it's going to look as if it's traveling along a straight line. When it hits a wall in that looking glass world, it just rolls straight into another looking glass world, and so on. It turns out that if you unfold your billiard table into this series of looking glass worlds, you're eventually going to get to one that's a perfect copy of your original billiard table, just shifted over. And any further unfolding is just going to give you repeats of things you've already seen. We can imagine that we take the last table before the repeat started and glue it to our original table instead of unfolding it onto a new table. And if you do all these different gluings, you end up with a surface. 
and the surface gets a very precise geometry that comes from the billiard table. For understanding a particular billiard table, Mirzakhani used an approach that looks at all the different billiard geometries at the same time, in the moduli space. This is a problem that concerns surfaces with any number of handles, and it's kind of a big guiding conjecture in the field, and nobody knew if we would ever make progress on it. Trying to prove a theorem is like trying to climb a mountain which nobody has ever climbed. So we were climbing up this mountain, and at some point we thought that we were kind of slowly going up, and at some point we kind of felt we could, like, could see the top, but then there is this ravine in front, and then there was a difficulty which we couldn't overcome. It was a little bit discouraging. We basically sank two years of immense effort, and we were stuck. It was a bit depressing when she stayed very positive, but somehow, yeah, we basically it was like, you know, I have no idea, you know, what do you? No, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, they made an announcement that they solved the problem, and they used some result which contained a table. And this table was dramatic, because part of the proof just evaporated. So it was an incredibly intense experience. And I mean, Mariam was just absolutely amazing, both in terms of mathematics, but also I think that there was just a lot of kind of mental stability aspect which is necessary for this kind of work, and she was amazing at that as well. Good mathematicians have the courage to imagine that they can solve a problem and to imagine an answer. Having the insight or faith that the solution can be figured out is really very important. Certainly, I think our personality was ideally suited to thinking about problems for a really long time and persevering on them. It took us maybe another two or three years to actually get the thing done. So what Mirza Khani and her collaborators did was they proved this theorem not just for a torus with two handles, but a torus with any number of handles. And the theorem they proved was so powerful that mathematicians started calling it the magic wand theorem. It's a huge breakthrough. A bunch of problems that you could not even approach, you couldn't solve at all, you couldn't even think about them, you can now solve just by applying this theorem. This work of Mirza Khani and Diskin is the central achievement in type model dynamics, and everything that's happening in the field, you see uh, her work is cited almost instantly in a lecture. People are different, and there are different styles of doing math, but if you want to get a reasonable, good idea, you have to really spend a lot of time just thinking patiently and not getting disappointed somehow, coming back to the same problem and staying somehow confident that maybe one day you will have a good idea. She was extremely focused and I think she had this attitude that I, you know, when she was, you know, trying to solve a problem that, you know, I can do it, I'm going to, you know, solve it. I was mostly interested in reading novels and books when I was younger and I even remember the time that I would every night tell myself some stories and night after night I would continue the story. I thought one day I'll become a writer. Mariam had two brothers, Orash and Ali. Orash was actually the one who maybe started her interest in mathematics. From her elementary school and from her family, she learned how to study mathematics how to think mathematics. Mariam and I met in 1988. We had just started middle school, and we became close friends quickly, and we continued to share a desk for the next seven years, middle school and high school. As the moment that, especially Mariam and Roya, we were together, we were together, and we were together, and we were together. For some of the questions that were very high, they were at the top of the class, that they were Math teacher was returning our test to us. 
And Mayam got her test back and she had a score of 16 out of 20. She was unhappy and she said, you know, that's it for me. I'm not going to even try to do better. But things changed. When we went to the seventh grade, she started to do very well. رسیدم به اون اسم مریم و رویا بعد احساس شدم خیر اینها سطحشون بسیار بالاتر از کلاس هم خاصا What made her so successful was her hard work the fact that she was very focused on her studies and her research and she practiced a lot practice 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 مریم to me was a child prodigy رویا and مریم were the first female students who got entered on the list of Olympiad entries for the international team. When we participated in the IMO, it was in 1994 in Hong Kong. Mayam got a gold medal. She got 40 out of 42, and I got a silver medal. I think it showed me somehow the beauty of math because I got excited about it, maybe just as a challenge. But then I realized that it's really nice and that I enjoy it. So it gave me the opportunity to think more about some math problems. It was 95. Olympiad was held in Canada. She received gold and in this time it was full mark, 42 out of 42. And so in our eyes, she was uh, some kind of a hero and champion. Her first choice was to come to the Department of Mathematical Sciences of Sharif University of Technology. We attended the university from 95 to 99. The chair of the department was Professor Tabesh, and we got a lot of support from him. We made a center of excellence. Let them grow up by their own pace, not control them, not push them. Mariam went to Harvard, and Roya went to MIT, so they were both in Boston, and Mariam's and Roya's friendship continued in Boston. Maybe a couple of months after she had met Jan, she told me that, you know, I have been going out with this guy, and... She has met this tall Czech man, who's a student as well. Uh, not a lot of detail, Mariam <laughs> didn't share a lot of details. They kind of held hands at the corner of the room, and I was like, oh, this is new. The fact that Mariam started dating a non-Iranian was kind of breaking several boundaries in our community. It was beautiful that Mariam didn't have those barriers as much internalized. My impression was that Mariam and Jan were very happy together. For various reasons, the usual two-body problem. She moved to Stanford where they made her a permanent offer. a happy life. Um, it was not all about math. We liked music, we liked sports, we traveled together. It was uh, in many ways a very normal life. Sadly, Mariam got sick just before Anahita turned two. She was diagnosed with breast cancer and then a sequence of treatments, you know, surgeries. If she had to choose between doing her job on a given day and you know, doing something important for Anahita, she would actually pick Anahita. She has stayed very positive. After her treatments, we thought that she was completely recovered. She has started to again focus on work. We have our fourth field medalist, Mariam Mirzakani, for her outstanding contributions to the dynamics and geometry of Riemann surfaces and their moduli spaces. It was fantastic that Miriam was awarded the Fields Medal and became the first woman to be so recognized. So it was a great moment when she actually was able to attend the ceremony, re receive the Fields Medal from the President of Korea. I think mathematics is, in my opinion, necessary for all the advancements in sciences and technology. So. In April of 2016, she was diagnosed with a stage four cancer. She knew that she didn't have much time left. I thought that she was so decided to overcome the illness. I was sure till the very last moment that she would manage it, that n nobody else would manage, but she would manage it. These are pictures from the last 
time I visited her, we discussed math, we discussed life, we discussed the, the cancer, we discussed everything. She was still funny, she was silly, she was goofy. She had a sense of humor about everything. If you look at the picture, you see a person full of life, full of energy. I do miss her all the time. Yes. Welcome back, everybody. And um, at least to me, these were very inspiring uh, movie. And thanks to the Simons Foundation and the, uh, the European Union, Mathematical European Union, for making this uh, movie possible. And uh, as to George Chichiri, also the cineast, and uh, for the various sponsoring. So we are ready to uh, start um, our uh, next uh, portion of.